Okay, on Monday, we talked about how we were adding and subtracting um, rational expressions. Today, we're going to actually solve them out. So looking at this, just looking at the left-hand side, they have the same denominator. So that means that I could combine my like terms on top. So what's one plus two? Three, a three over four. But over here, what does X equal? Three. So x would equal 3. So since it has the same denominator, we can just kind of like add across. OK, on the bottom, the second one, they don't have the same denominator. OK, so in order for us to have the same denominator, we're going to have to multiply by a factor. OK, so since this one's 12, we're going to try to make this one 12. So we're going to multiply by 4 in the top and four in the bottom. So this is gonna give me five twelfths minus four X divided by 12 equals seven over 12. Okay, now that all three of these have the same denominator, what I can do is I can take the top and just find what X is. So I'm gonna say five minus four X equals seven, I'm gonna subtract five, and then I'm gonna divide by negative four. That's gonna be X equals one half. So looking at this first one, do they all three have the same denominator? No, okay, so we see that there is we see that there is a 5e to the second power, 5e to the second power, and then this guy has a b to the second power. So what is this one missing? A five. So I'm gonna multiply by five in the top and five in the bottom. So this is gonna give me one over 5v to the second equals five plus v plus two over 5v to the second. Okay. So now that I have the same denominator, I can drop that bottom and just leave it with the top. So for instance, I get one equals five plus V plus two. Can I combine like terms? Yeah, that's gonna give me seven plus V. I can move that seven to the other side by subtracting. And so V is going to equal negative six. Something. Okay. V cannot equal zero. Okay, obviously we already know that V equals negative six. We already solved for this but we're also gonna say that V cannot equal zero. The reason why is because in the denominator, if we set that equal to zero and solve, then we're gonna get, uh, I'm sorry, yeah. If we set that equal to zero and solve, we would get zero for V, but that would make it undefined. So we wanna make sure that we state the extraneous solution. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm going too fast, back up. If I have negative six, and I plugged it into the denominator and plugged it back into the original problem. Would it work? Okay, well, let's check. For this one, if I'm gonna check it, I'm gonna plug in negative six for V. So I'm gonna have one over five times negative six squared. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna have five plus negative six plus two over five times negative six squared. I'm checking on the right-hand side if it's gonna be equal to the left-hand side. Okay, so if I simplify this top, that's gonna give me one over five times negative six to the second. Over here, that's already one over five times six to the second. So since they're the same, then yes, V equals negative six. So my point is you always have to check 
when you're solving. So you have to have the same denominator. So again, we're gonna look at these. We got x minus three, we've got two. And then over here, when you factor, you get two times x minus three. So we see that this first part is missing the red. We're gonna multiply by the red in the top and the bottom. That's gonna give us two x. Right here, we're missing the yellow. So we're gonna multiply by x minus three in the top and the bottom. That's gonna give us x times x minus three. And we got that equal to six x. So that's gonna have us with two times x minus three in the bottom and two times x minus three in the bottom over here. Since the denominators are the same, I can drop them and then just solve from there. So this is gonna give me two x plus x times x minus three. And we're trying to check if that's equal to six x. When we distribute this, we get x squared plus two x minus three x. And again, we're gonna try to solve. So we're gonna combine like terms. So that's gonna give us x squared minus one x equals six x. And when I subtract six x from this side, I'm gonna get x squared minus seven x equals zero. When I factor that and set it equal to zero, that's gonna give me x times x minus seven. So that would mean that x equals seven and x equals zero. When you have a quadratic, you're gonna essentially factor at the very end. So notice how we went from x squared minus seven x and then we factored. Does that make sense? And then you gotta set it equal to zero and then solve. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes. So again, the biggest thing is that you have to actually check. Okay. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna plug in zero into the equation, make sure that it works. And then you're gonna plug in seven into the equation. So when I do this, I'm gonna plug in X equals zero. What I normally do is I plug it into this part, but you can plug it in back into the original. That's okay too, okay? When you do that, you're going to get zero plus zero times zero minus three. Okay, so that's gonna give me zero over negative six is equal to zero over negative six. So they're equal, so x equals zero works. Okay, so again, you, okay. So when I plug in x equals seven into this equation, I'm gonna get 14 plus seven times seven minus three. When I simplify all of that mess, I'm gonna get seven times four, which is gonna be 28 plus 14. So when I add those together, I'm gonna get 42 in the top. Seven times four? Yeah, because seven minus three is gonna give me four. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so that would give me 42 on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, if I plug in six times seven, that will give me 42. So since they are equal, then that means that x equals seven also works, okay? This whole checking process, you're just taking the numbers that you solved for and then making sure that they work. They don't always work, so you have to check, okay? On this one, so really quick, if I had something like this, two over x equals eight over 16, and I said, hey, solve this, what would you go about doing? What would you do? You'd probably do like cross multiply, right? Okay, that's probably gonna be the easiest way to do it. So eight times X and two times 16. So what's two times 16? 
Great. And then a times x. Then I can divide both of these and then solve. That's cool. Yeah. Same thing's going to happen with this. I'm going to cross multiply. Okay. Another way that you're doing this is you're taking the denominators and multiplying them by each. So for instance, I could take x and multiply it over here. I could take 3x minus 1 and multiply it over here. You can do it that way as well. I'm going to show you the butterfly method, though, because that's the easiest way to do it. So 5 times x is going to give me 5x. 2 times 3x minus 1 is going to give me 2 times 3x minus 1. So now I'm going to distribute. And then I'm going to subtract. And when I do that, that's going to give me negative 1x equals negative 2. I'm going to divide by negative 1 on both sides. So x is going to equal 2. Expressions, you have to check. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the original and I'm going to plug in what I just found. Okay, so I'm going to have 2 over 2 equals 5 over 3 times 2 minus 1. 2 over 2 is just going to give me 1. Over here, we've got 3 times 2, which is going to give me 6. 6 minus 1 is going to give me 5. 5 divided by 5 is going to give me 1. So does 1 equal 1? Yeah. So then x equals 2. You have to check. So far, all of ours have been 